everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I have a trash to treasure video where I'll be transforming four different items. It's been a little while since I've done a video like this so I really hope that you enjoy it. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Now let's go ahead and get started. For DIY number one, I found this pizza pan. I think this is what it is. It's this like really large wood piece and I picked it up from Goodwill. It was $2.99 and I knew that this piece had so much potential and that I could definitely do something with it. So the first thing that I started to do with this piece is I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did have to do three different coats of this paint to get everything all covered up nicely. And then once the paint was completely dried, I went in with some sandpaper and I started sanding around all of the edges first to give this piece a really rustic distressed look and then once I had all of the edges sanded I took that same sandpaper and just started sanding in random spots on the front of this piece again I wanted it to be really rustic and distressed and I did use a 60 grit sandpaper so it was really rough and distressed looking and I did do the exact same thing to the other side of this piece as well. I wanted both sides to look exactly the same. And then I'm also using this Hello Word piece that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I've had it in my stash forever and I'm finally using it today. I decided to paint it with the Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Rich Black. And I only had to do a one quick coat of this paint to get everything all covered up. And then I'm also gonna be making my own bow for this piece today. And I'm using this burlap ribbon from Walmart. And I did get this around Christmas time last year. I'm just seeing how large I'm wanting my bow to be. And then I'm cutting this piece of burlap ribbon down to size. Then to add some detail to the burlap ribbon, I'm using some of this buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and I'm cutting the buffalo check ribbon the exact same size as the burlap ribbon, and I'm actually gonna be attaching these two together. I'm using some hot glue on the burlap ribbon and then just pressing the buffalo check ribbon over top of that to attach it, and I am attaching it right in the center. Then I'm taking this piece that I just created and I'm forming it into a circle. To form it into a circle, I'm just hot gluing the two ends of the ribbon together. Then to make another piece for my bow, I'm taking the same burlap ribbon and I'm cutting this piece a little bit smaller than the first piece that I did. And then the same with the buffalo check ribbon, I'm just cutting that piece the same size as my burlap ribbon, but only a little bit smaller than the first one I did. I'm hot gluing those two pieces together and then I'm creating a circle with these two as well and just hot gluing the two ends of the ribbon together. Then to create the tail end for my bow, I'm doing the exact same thing, only this time I'm cutting a really extra long piece of that burlap ribbon and the buffalo check ribbon, and then I'm doing those same steps. I'm hot gluing them together, and I'm even forming them into a circle, just like I did with the other two, and hot gluing the two ends of them together. Now that my pieces are made, I can create my bow. I'm placing the smallest piece on top of the medium sized piece and then cinching them together in the center. And then I'm taking a piece of jute and I'm wrapping it around the center several times and then tying a knot on the back end of my bow just to make sure that everything is secure and then I'm just clipping off those jute ends. Then to add some detail to my bow, I'm using some of this cotton cord from Hobby Lobby and I'm first starting to attach it on the back side of my bow and then wrapping it around the front of my bow three times and then I'm just clipping the end off on the back side of my bow and then hot gluing it down. Now I can start placing things on my piece. I'm taking the tail ends of my bow, which is the longest piece I made, and I folded it over in the center. I'm then just kind of figuring out where I'm gonna wanna actually glue everything down before I glue it down. Once I get it all figured out, I then place some hot glue onto my piece and then place my tail ends onto that. And then I just start attaching the rest of my bow, as you can see here. The greenery I'm gonna be using are these lamb's ear stems from Walmart. I'm also using some of these greenery pieces, I believe are from Hobby Lobby, and then these eucalyptus stems also from Walmart. 
I pulled off the lamb's ears so that they were all separate and easier to work with and I just started hot gluing them down all around the outside of my bow. I just pulled up the bow a little bit and then glued them down and I did the same thing for the other pieces of greenery. I really liked the mixture of greenery because it adds a lot of dimension. Then for the very last step in this project, I needed to attach my Hello Word cutout. And to do that, I just used hot glue on the backside. Here is my pizza pan all transformed into this Hello sign. I think it turned out so beautiful. I couldn't be happier with it. And if I ever want to actually hang it, I could always add a hanger on the back. Now moving into DIY number two or transformation number two, I'm gonna be making over this cute little table that I picked up from a local garage sale for only $4. I knew it had so much potential and I knew I had to get it. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is painting the table legs and I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Whenever I'm making over a table, I always like to start by painting all of the legs before I start painting any tops of the tables. I'm then flipping my table over and starting to paint the surface on the shelf that's on the bottom of the table. And then I did the top of the table as well. I always like to paint the underneath portions of my table as well. Even though you're not gonna see it, I just like to do it because it makes the table look finished. Then once the table was all painted and dried, I wanted to add a little bit of distressing. So I'm taking some 60 grit sandpaper and I went around all of the edges of the top of the table and then also the bottom shelf. And then this table had really beautiful detail on the legs and I wanted those to pop. So I took my sandpaper and just sanded around all of the details. And then to seal my table, I'm using this Minwax Polycrylic Protective Finish and I'm using it in clear matte and they do have a bunch of different finishes. And I just used a paintbrush to paint this on and I did do three coats of this sealer to make sure that everything is sealed really nicely and my paint will last. For the top of my table, I knew I wanted to have a design, so I created this one here in my Cricut Design Space. It says, for the best of times are always found when friends and fa family gather round. So I just did my usual cutout with my Cricut and then I transferred it to the top of my table with a little help from my puppy Cooper. And here is my table all transformed and flipped. It was a definitely a good find for $4 and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Next for transformation number three, I'm gonna be making over this beautiful large tray. This is, I believe an old vintage um, like TV tray. This was my grandmother's and I've been waiting to do something with it and I finally decided to make it over. It's beautiful as is, but I knew that I wanted to do something with it. I first started using the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. No surprise there. I use this color and paint all the time. I did have to do three different coats of this paint to get that brown stain color all covered up. After all of my coats of paint were dry, I then wanted to add a little bit of distressing. No surprise there either. I love distressing. You guys know that if you've seen any of my videos. I took my 60 grit sandpaper and I started going around all of the edges of my tray. And then this tray had some really beautiful detail on the sides. It had these grooves and I really wanted those to pop. So I went in between all of those grooves with my sandpaper to make those really stand out. Then I decided to add some of this folk art chalk paint in the color Castle. Here I'm just using my Dollar Tree stencil brush to dry brush this color on in random spots to give it some more distressing. Once I had the back all painted, I did the same for the front. I didn't add as much distressing with the paint on the front as I did with the sanding, but I did wanna add just a little bit of extra distressing with the paint. I'm also using this stencil. This one's from Joanne Fabrics. It came in a pack of stencils. It says life doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And I'm just placing it in the center. I used my painter's tape to hold the stencil down. And then for all of the words on my stencil, I'm using my folk art chalk paint in the color rich black with a Dollar Tree stencil brush. And then for the little vine on the bottom, I'm using the folk art chalk paint in the color sage shadow. 
Then once the paint was all dry, I removed all of the painter's tape and the stencil. This is what the tray looks like all transformed. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful and it really fits way better with my decor and it'll always have a place in my heart since it was my grandmother's. Now for the last transformation today, transformation number four, I'm gonna be making over this really cute recipe box. I picked this up from, I believe it was Salvation Army and it was $3.99. It's cute as is if this was the kind of style that you have in your home, but I wanted to make mine a little bit more farmhouse. So the first thing I did was start painting it with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Plaster. And I did two coats of this paint. I painted the entire thing. I even painted the inside because of course I want this piece to look completely finished. For the front of this piece that says the words recipe, I painted that with that same Waverly paint and plaster as well. And then for around that piece where it was originally like a dark green color, I painted over that with my Castle Color Chalk Paint from Folk Art and I did two coats of this paint. Once all of the paint was dry, I wanted the recipe word that was cut out on the front of this box to stand out a little bit. So I took some sandpaper and just stand it over that to give it a little bit of distressing and then I used the sandpaper around all of the edges of the box as well. Then to add some detail to this piece I wanted to use these really cute kitchen stencils from Dollar Tree and I first started by just using my painters tape to tape down the stencil where I want to use one of the little designs and for the colors I'm using it's just that same folk art chalk paint in the color castle and I used a Dollar Tree stencil brush to do all of my painting and then after I had one design painted on then I would just move my stencil around retape it down where I want to paint the design on and then did that same same process with the folk art chalk paint and castle with the rest of the designs that I painted on the top. And this is the recipe box all transforms. It now fits perfect with all of my farmhouse decor and I think it turned out super cute. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it. It really helps out my channel. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. I know a lot of you have been saying that you have not been being notified, so make sure that your bell is on. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching.